All right, guys, uh, it's Tim McCamus. We're here in the uh, shop looking at our display chassis again and wanted to uh, get a little deeper into some of the rear four link settings and some of the combinations that work on these cars. And I uh, want to talk a little bit this evening about rear steer. Uh, we started this uh, series on, on different combinations on the, uh, the back side of the car here on the, on the four link settings. Uh, a while back, and if you want to reference that, if you go back and look for our rear suspension setup video, it'll kind of give you a refresher on some of the basics, alignment, some of the basic settings, some of that stuff that we went over, because this is going to be a little bit more advanced. Um, so my goal here is to try to explain how this works so that you guys can do this stuff on your own car. All these cars react the same, no matter how much power you have, they all basically do the same thing. So the more power you have, the you might have to put a little bit more of a setting in, but the, the same principles work. So if you talk to any of these so-called chassis gurus out there that set up these cars, they want you to think this is all black magic and voodoo and a bunch of mirrors and shit that goes on in here. But this is all really simple physical parts that react to a setting. Okay, so, so I don't want to get too far off track, but what we're going to talk to tonight about is rear steer. So previously I touched on preload and, and anti-roll settings and wheelie bars and stuff like that, but the practice of using rear steer is taking the housing and changing the alignment in the car to make the car react a certain way. So, um, if the car is, let's say if it's got big power, okay, if you got big power, the, the torque from that engine is going gonna, is gonna to apply some pressure to this rear tire, okay, the right rear tire. And you can use preload, you can use negative preload, which is making this bar longer. You can, you can put negative in this and, and roll some pressure off of this right rear tire onto the left rear tire to help equalize the car out and make it go straight. But Preload here after about two flats, and if you go back and look at that, you know, the flats are these flats on the hex up here from where, you, where you're going to turn this. So, you know, if, if that is a flat there, if I move it to that position, that's one flat. So when you take the slack out of this and put some preload in it, and I put a little negative in this to make the car go back to the right, after about two flats, you're really not doing anything but binding all this stuff up because on a four link system, if I shorten one of the four bars or lengthen one of the four bars, it twists the housing up and down to take weight off of one tire and put it on another. So in essence, if I'm going to lengthen this and put negative preload in, this will take some pressure off of this rear tire and transfer it over to the left rear tire, which will then make the car track to the right. So that's if I'm going left, I'm going to use negative. If I'm going right, I'm going to use positive. Well, after you get to that point and you got two flats in it and the car's still digging to the left a little bit. All right, what do you do now? You can't just keep cranking on this. I mean, you can crank on and crank on it until you break the rod ends off, but it's not going to do anything. So we need to use rear steer. And what I'm, when, I, when I have rear steer in the car, so the, the initial alignment on this is zero. So we, we put the rear end axle center line straight with this rear cross member, so that's considered straight in the car. That, that axle housing is lined up with, the, with the, the center line of the rear cross member so that it's square. But when we put rear steer in, if the car is going left, we want to put positive rear steer in, which means that we're going to take this right side and pull it forward. So we're going to shorten these bars up and pull this. We're actually going to cock the housing in the car to make the car go back to the right. Now you say, okay, well, if I'm cocking the rear end and pointing it to the right, or I'm sorry, pointing it to the left, won't the car go more to the left because that's the way the housing's pointed? Well, it doesn't work that way. It's kind of like a similar to a, the way a forklift works is. So as I'm sitting on the starting line, I got all four tires on the ground. That initial hit is what I want to do is square that car up and get it going down the racetrack. So if you think about a forklift where you steer with the rear tires, if you turn the rear tires that way, it'll go the opposite way. So if you turn them this way, the back end of the car swings around and goes that way. So just like a forklift. So think about it like that. So the car's going to the left. I got two flats in it. I'm going to put some rear steer in. So I'm going to take this back to neutral 
and then I'm going to pull this housing forward on this side, which in turn will cock the left side back a little bit. So we're going to take it and just twist it just slightly in the car because we're making our adjustment here. So our wheels out here. So that's going to give us back on that side forward on this side. And, and it doesn't take much. I like to measure it here at the axle flange and you can simply do that with a, with a string plumb bob and measure to the rear cross member. You can measure each side and make sure that it's square and then you can pull it forward. If you don't have a level spot to work on and you're at the racetrack, you can measure it here at the lower bar. You can measure it from the center of this bolt to the center of this bolt because you want a reference number so that you can go back to and say, okay, I had an eighth inch of rear steer in it. Now I'm going to put three sixteenths. So you just have to remember that this number in here multiplies out here. So, so an eighth inch at this lower four link bar is going to be almost a quarter inch of rear steer. So either, either way you want to do it is fine as long as you reference it the same way each time and kind of keep track of where you're at. And anytime you get lost on these cars, just go back to zero, go back to straight, square everything up, take all the preload out and then go back to your settings. So, so we got the car going to the left a little bit. We got two flats in it. It responded some, but not enough. So let's take and unjam these two bars and let's shorten these up. And let's, let's say I want to put an eighth inch of rear steer in it out here at the axle flange. So to give you an idea, an eighth inch is a pretty good move depending on the car, the power the car has. So in the shop here, we know like if it's a supercharged engine, it's got some pretty good power. We're going to start right off with 3 16 or a quarter inch of rear steer uh, at the axle flange. So we know that that's going to be pretty close because we don't want to crank a bunch of uh, negative preload in this. So we still want to use preload. And, and so what we're doing here is using preload and rear steer and wheelie bars and shock settings and anti-roll and all that stuff together. A, a small portion of each of those instead of just thinking, get narrow minded where I'm just going to use preload only. So now that we've got that measured, we can shorten these up and we pull this forward um, an eighth and we're going to come back here and we're going to jam the bottom bar up now because we're done moving the rear end in the car. But we're still going to want to put a little negative in it. So we don't want to do it all with rear steer. We don't want to make an adjustment all with preload. So if we had two in here, I would put an eighth inch of rear steer in and then I would put one flat of negative in. So that way I've got a, a little bit of both uh, of the adjustments working for me to push the car back to the right. Now, one thing you have to remember too is that you need to check the center of the housing in the car when you start putting rear steer in because if you cock the housing, you have a wishbone assembly here that's a three point uh, mount to center the rear end in the car this way, from side to side. So if you start jacking the rear end around, that housing is going to push over to the right a little bit but if you're putting positive rear steer in. So doesn't matter if your wishbone's mounted one way or the other, if you put it in there, it has to cock it just a little bit. So check that. And now since we've cocked the rear end, we really can't use our alignment bars. Like I showed you in another video, use the alignment bars and measure over to the four link bracket because we have the rear end crooked. You have to put the alignment bar in up and down this way and measure over to the to the chassis at this point so that we get the rear end housing centered in the car from side to side. So if you can imagine if I've got now, and when you're checking that alignment, make sure this is neutral. Don't check this with preload in it because we're going to be cocking that rear end housing. So if I had the alignment bars on it and I put rear steer in, those two alignment bars now would, would they would feed over to the left. So if I measured off of them, the measurements would be way off. So I want to measure the rear steer here at the four link bar or out here on a plumb bob. And then once I'm happy with that, I want to turn those things straight up and measure right over here to the chassis on each side and make that number the same. Now I know that I've got my rear end housing centered in the car from left to right. So if you look at the back of the car, your shocks are nice and straight up and down, or if your shocks are mounted in at the top a little bit, they're both about the same, but now you have your rear end housing centered, but you have positive rear steer in the car and that will easily straighten that car back out and there are limits to it too so you don't want to have an inch of rear steer that's way too much so you can use a little bit of rear steer and out here at the wheel you can you know you can use as much as three eighths or seven sixteenths or even a half inch out here at the wheel not at the bracket that's a half inch at the 
at the bar here is too much. So out here at the wheel, um, you would be at, let's say a half inch maximum or maybe a quarter inch here at the bar difference from side to side. So same way it works if the car is going right, you can put a little negative rear steer in it, which would be to pull this back. But the tendency to use rear steer is because the car is going left, because as the power increases, the torque of the engine is going to roll the, the drive line here over and try to drive this right rear tire harder. So in essence, we're going to take that and we're going to use a little bit of preload, a little bit of rear steer, we're going to use a little stagger in the wheelie bars, and we can even use a little stagger in the shock settings to straighten that car out and get it going straight down the track. Now, after we get this set and after you make this change, then I like to come back and neutral um, the uh, anti-roll bar so it doesn't have any load in it. And I do all this with the tires off, rear end hanging, set it in the pits, bolt it together and go. You don't have to do it down on the ground. You don't have to crawl under the car and check all this stuff because once you get your baseline with it up on the jacks and, and back in the pits, and that, that's your number to use every time, and then let the car react to the change and then come back and make adjustments from that. Just remember, the, these, are, these are just, cars are just, these chassis are just tubing and mechanical parts. They don't have any logic or any kind of intelligence in them. It's, it's the people turning the screws on these things that make them go left or right. So use that to your advantage and, and use this rear steer as a, as a tuning tool because it's very handy. And it sounds, it sounds weird to, to cock the rear end in the car, but it works. It works very well and it, and it keeps you from having to load the car in other areas to try to get it to go straight. So that's all my 101 for tonight and uh, we'll be back with some more.